So here we have a video of a young man proposing to his girlfriend at a NBA game. Now I will show you the video of how that ended, but I wanted to use this video as a teaching point regarding the purpose of marriage and proposals. See, much like the modern wedding today, the typical proposal has become this outlandish grab for attention and validation. One thing I cannot stand is when men place themselves in public settings amongst a large group of people so that they can propose and get the standing ovation from the crowd. Now, to me, that's as ridiculous as people spending fifty dollars to $100,000 on their wedding. They care more about the attention and the spectacle of the event than they do about the actual commitment that they are agreeing to. Now, if you've ever seen these videos on YouTube showing failed marriage proposals, the reason this happens is because, number one, sinners are not dating to be married. They are dating to be dating. That's it. That's why Christians court with purpose. Okay, And that purpose is marriage, not just to be out here kicking it and having a good time. When the Christian man who's been courting his dear sister in the Lord to be his wife, they've already established what is to happen next. Okay, So it's no surprise to her when she sees her husband to be bowed down on one knee. And so here's the video of the young man having to learn the hard way. Yo, Edward, stand up! You know these dating services on the internet? Find the person that's compatible to you. Okay? That's kind of scary. Find the person that's compatible to you. Okay. It's not of God. It's not of God. You say, why? Because God usually doesn't do that. I mean, I guess He can, but it's very rare. I want to marry a woman who just loves all the stuff I love. You, you may want to marry a woman who loves all the stuff you love she'll, so that she'll do everything you want to do, you selfish person. God, for the most part, is going to give you a wife or give you a husband that is not compatible to you. And you go, oh man, then maybe I was supposed to marry him. But see, the world tells you just the opposite, don't they? They tell you just the opposite. Why? Because everything the world's going to tell you is selfish and self-centered. They tell you just the opposite. Now, here's the way it's going to be. God will give you a mate who is strong in all the areas where they must be strong so that you are not tempted beyond what you can bear. But God is going to give you a husband, a wife, who does not meet your expectations in many of the areas where you most want him or her to meet your expectations. Why? Because he hates you? Why is he doing this? Well, first of all, many of your expectations are probably carnal and self-centered. But the most important reason is this. When you think about Jesus, what do you think about? Do you think about his wrath, his judgment? I don't. I mean, that's there. But when I think about Jesus, if someone said, Describe for me, Jesus, what are the first words that pop into your mind with regard to Jesus? It would be unconditional love, grace, and mercy. Okay? Now, you know all those prayers that you make? Lord, I want to be like Jesus. Lord, I want to be conformed to the image of Christ. Okay. God's going to give you a mate who does not meet all the conditions. Why? Because if you're married to a man or a woman who meets all the conditions, you will never learn how to love unconditionally.